Hi, I'm Miss Bolin. I'm going to be your art teacher for today, and we are going to be working on a cool project using watercolor, as well as a very cool product called the Roller Bond, which is a removable tape roller that Jerry's offers. Uh, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it, and I'm going to show you one thing you can do for uh, resist. So, what we're going to be doing is this right here. This is one sample that I made. Yours is, doesn't have to look like mine. You're going to do yours your own way, but this is just a guide for you to refer to. Okay, I chose this because these are birch trees. They're my favorite kind of tree. I grew up in Alaska, and that's the most common sort of tree, so I'm really drawn to those. No pun intended. Okay, first thing we're going to do is you open up the roller bond, take off the top, what we want to be thinking about is that there's going to be a foreground and a background. You have to think about that the foreground is going to be coming forward. The background is obviously in the background. So first thing we're going to do, you grasp the roller bond and you kind of push it and slide it across the page. Make sure that you've made the line all the way across. You may have to come back over. Okay. What's cool about this is it's not permanent. So after we've painted the watercolor over it, everything is dried, we can very easily rub it with our finger. It'll erase and anywhere that you have the roller bond um, adhesive, it's gonna still be white. And that you can see this on the um, project that I did and it just does such a cool effect. Okay, so we've done our horizon line, which is what separates for us the foreground and the background. Now we're gonna do our trees, which is so much fun. Okay, I like to start at the top with one of the branches. You bring it down. I like to bring this one way down into the foreground. How about another branch? It's a little difficult to see here because it really is clear, but hopefully you can get the idea that you are drawing a tree. Make sure you put lots of different branches, have them kind of Work off of each other, a little bit here, a little bit there. Sometimes you have to do it, just use a lot of pressure. I like to hold it so that my top finger is here on the top and then I have a little bit more control. So now we've put in some of our branches and it's time to move on to the trunk. You wanna have a solid white trunk. So you have to come in here, push down and it may be hard to see on camera, but you'll be able to tell where you've put the roller bond and you wanna fill in so that you have a solid base for your tree. It's okay if it's not perfect. We really want this to look organic. We don't need it to be geometric because trees are organic. They grow lots of different directions. They're not a square or a triangle. They're nature, so they are organic, which is one of the things that we talk about in art. Okay, so I think I have this tree pretty well made. I'm gonna do another one in the foreground over on this side. I like it so that my trees that are in the foreground start sort of towards the bottom and continue up over past our horizon line that we made. I'm gonna do another one over here. I'm gonna have this one reach way up towards the sky. Have a lot of different branches. The more branches you have coming off of your tree, the more interesting it's gonna be. Another thing I forgot to mention is, rather than making just a straight horizon line across the back, I think it's more interesting if you make it kind of hilly so make it um, a curved line. So I am doing my best to fill in the trunk with the adhesive, because remember that's what's gonna stay white. And birch trees are a beautiful white color. They have um, bark that peels off and a lot of artists uh, where birch trees grow, peel off the bark and just make fantastic art out of it. They paint on the inside. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do with birch bark. Okay, so I think that I have this one done as well. Okay, another important thing is I wanna show distance 
the trees in the front are larger and I'm going to do a smaller tree in the back. We have to make sure that it's not, that it's bark, that it's trunk is not continuing up into the foreground. So we're going to start behind the horizon line and we're going to make a little tree back here. It's going to be smaller because it's further away. Okay. Let's see. Parents may need to help me with this a little bit because even though this is a great product, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult to use than I'd like. Okay, I think I have the tree in the back. If it's not, like I said, it's completely removable. So if you've made a branch and it's not the shape that you'd like, just go ahead and rub it off with your finger. It comes right off and you can redo it like that. I'm going to add another little bit to this tree. Okay, now we get to do the fun part. We're going to go ahead and start our watercolor painting. I, um, the kit I'm using is also from Jerry's. It's this First Impressions art kit. I love it. I showed it to my kids and they couldn't wait to get one. It looks super professional, comes in this sturdy clear case. It has colored pencils. It has oil pastels. It has all kinds of great stuff. Today I'm just going to be using the watercolors from it. So I think I'm going to start with the foreground and for the foreground I'm going to use some greens and blues because we're thinking about, you know, the forest floor. So just dip your paintbrush in the water. And I'm going to go ahead and use this green. I like to use, a lot of people when they do watercolor, they like it to be really soft. Um, I like it to have a little bit more color than that. So you really work the color into the brush and go ahead and start your painting. You can add more water to the paint that you've already have on the canvas. When you're painting, it's important to take your time. I don't want a lot of scribble scrabble. I want you to use nice, even strokes. We want to have a nice product when we're done. You want to have something that you're proud of. So I'm using some green. And already you can tell when you go over the roller bond adhesive, it's kind of beating up over that because it is resisting the paint. So, doing my painting, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to another color because I don't want it to be all green. I want some variety to it. It adds interest. So, I'm going to add some of this lighter green as well. I think this is kind of a springtime scene. So, I want some light green. It's okay if you go over the other colors. I like that effect. That looks really great in watercolor. So I have a couple different greens. I'm going to add some brown, maybe around the base of my trees. It's really hard to mess up with uh, watercolor. I don't really believe in messing up with art anyways, because it really seems like uh, anything in art is kind of just an opportunity for working through problem solving and um, oftentimes I'll do something that I wasn't expected and it turns out so much better than I was originally even planning. So I like the way that watercolor spreads out. It looks really natural and since we are doing this organic scene, it's nice that the water and the color flows so organically. Okay, I'm going to take a break right now, work on this some more, and come back, show you when the foreground is done, and then we'll start to work on the background.